Hi, we're at part four of our pump head calculations section. This is the section where we're going to run through a few examples. But in order so you, for you to know the lingo, make sure you've watched the other sections first. So this section will help you to be able to answer the technical math-based questions on your third class B1 exam. Okay, so here's example one. Uh, what we have is a tank and our tank is going to be open to the atmosphere and supply to a pump. So we've got a little tank here and we've got some fluid in it and uh, it's open to the atmosphere and then this tank supplies to a pump. And then my pump discharges to a tank that is pressurized to 400 kPa, so we've got a pressurized tank, and that guy is elevated at 7.2 meters. So we've got 400 kPa gauge pressure. Um, so we have uh, a couple of elevations in our system. So we've got an elevation here, uh, 7.2 meters, and we have a elevation here, 4.2 meters. We have 3.5 meters of friction and that's broken out so that 1.5 of it is on the suction side and on the other side uh, my head loss on the discharge side is worth 2 meters. And I don't have any um, velocities in the system, so I'm not going to have to worry about calculating those. Okay, so we have a couple of calculations to do. So first one is the total static head. Now, um, let's not forget that because we have a pressurized tank, we're going to have to consider that when we calculate our total static head. So our total static head is going to be equal to the height that we have to discharge the water to. So if we consider this to be my point number two, and I guess my point number one, um, what I have is my Z2, the height at two, plus the column of water equivalent to the pressure in that tank. So pressure two over um, rho times G minus the height of the supply tank, Z1. And if it had any pressure, I would also subtract the pressure head there. So I have a value of 7.2 meters plus. Uh, now I'm going to figure out my pressure head. So, um, you know, maybe I'll do it over here just to save a bit of space. So P2 over rho G is going to be equal to 400,000 pascals over top of rho. Um, so assuming the water is 1,000 uh, kilograms per cubic meter times gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And that ends up, when I calculate that out, to 40.77 meters is my pressure to over rho g, my pressure head in that supply tank, or sorry, the discharge tank. So 7.2 plus 40.77 meters minus 4.2 meters and so this system has a static head of 43.774 meters. Okay, So without any flow in the system, that's just the amount of energy that it's going to take in order to move some fluid from tank 1 to tank 2. Okay, so I also have my dynamic discharge head. And as we worked out before, my dynamic discharge head is going to be equal to my 
dynamic or my discharge suction head plus my discharge pressure head plus my head loss on the discharge side minus my velocity squared over 2g um, leaving the pump okay so the velocity in this case is zero and what i'm left with is my head height 7.2 meters plus my um, pressure head 40.77 meters plus two meters of head loss and I'm going to end up with a value of seven uh, sorry 52.97 meters so that's how much head the pump has to supply in order to push water from the pump up and into the tank. My total or my dynamic suction head, dynamic suction head, is going to be equal to my um, suction static head plus my suction pressure head minus the head loss minus the velocity squared over 2g um, entering the the pump okay my 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 suction velocity head um, and once again that guy is just zero because of my my velocities so my dyna um, dynamic suction head is going to be 4.2 plus zero no pressure in that tank it's open minus 1.5 and I get a value of 2.7 meters so my total discharge head is going to be equal to my dynamic discharge head minus my dynamic suction head um, the dynamic discharge head is how much head I need to produce at the outlet of the pump to move through the discharge side and my dynamic suction head is how much head all of my system is providing to the inlet of that pump so one minus the other is going to tell me how much my pump has to produce in total so 52.97 meters minus 2.7 meters and I would end up with 50.27 meters of head required from that pump that's how much output it needs to provide in order for fluid to move through the system with those given parameters okay so here's an example problem that comes up a lot in your textbook as well as it's a typical exam uh, question on your 3B1 exam. So you have a tank and it is feeding a pump and it is leading to a tank. Okay, so same stuff as we've been doing all along. There's a couple of little hiccups to this one that may throw you off. First one, um, every system we've drawn goes left to right. Uh, this one goes right to left, so just be careful on it that you're seeing it correctly. Uh, the supply tank is on the right-hand side. The discharge is on the left. So, so that's problem number one. Uh, number two is that we are mixing units. So you can see the tank on the left has gauge pressure. The tank on the right has absolute pressure. So we just want to be careful that we are picking one unit and sticking with it. Usually in these problems, we typically use gauge pressure so that if we have a tank that's open to atmosphere, it eliminates it out of the problem. It becomes a zero. So that's typically the pr process that we go to. However, in this sealed system, it really doesn't matter if we have absolute or gauge pressure. Um, the calculations are going to end up working out the same whether we have gauge or absolute. My preference for this would be to use everything as absolute 
And if we use everything as absolute, that means that we don't have negative pressure heads like we would have if we had a vacuum as we do on that vessel on the right. So I think we'll take the approach that uh, we'll put everything in absolute values. Um, your textbook puts everything into gauge um, and either approach is, is okay. So you can, you can take either approach. Um, I prefer just putting everything into absolute units. And I think I'm going to do that right away before I head into this problem any further. So uh, not 100 kPa gauge, really that would be equal to 200 kPa absolute. Okay, so um, let's get started, shall we? Um, dynamic discharge head is going to be dynamic discharge head is equal to the static discharge head plus the dynamic pressure head plus the losses minus the dynamic velocity head. Um, and just to make things easier maybe on on the my calculation sheet, uh, I'm just going to work these out right onto the onto the diagram itself. Okay, so up here I have my pressure, um, and that's going to be my my discharge pressure head, and that's going to be equal to 200,000 pascals divided by gravity, and also divided by the density. And that gives me 20.39 meters of pressure head. I also have a my dynamic velocity head. So my dynamic velocity head due to velocity leaving the pump. Um, and it's going to be equal to 4 squared over 2 times gravity, and that ends up being 0 0.815 meters. My static discharge head is going to be the distance all the way from my pump center line up to the surface, and that's going to be my static discharge head is going to be equal to 26 meters. Okay, so my dynamic discharge head is going to be my static discharge head, 26 meters, plus my dynamic pressure head, 20.39 meters, plus the head loss on the discharge side, which was given in the problem, 1.8 meters, minus the velocity head, 0 0.815 meters, and altogether, that gives me 47.375 meters. Okay, so dynamic suction head, I'm going to work out. Um, I'm going to have a pressure head. So that's going to be my suction pressure head and it's going to be equal to 25,000 pascals over 9.81 and also over the density at 1,000. And that guy is going to be worth uh, 2.55 meters. My static height is 10 meters. And I'm going to have a static velo uh, sorry, a suction velocity head equal to 3 squared over 2 times 9.81. And that is 0 0.459 meters. So my dynamic suction head is going to be my static suction head plus my static pressure head minus my losses on the suction side 
minus my static velocity head, or sorry, my suction velocity head. So I have a static suction head of 10, and I have a uh, suction pressure head of 2.55. I have a loss of 0 0.5, and I have a velocity head of 0 0.4. Five, nine. And if I add those all up together, I get 11.591 uh, meters. The total dynamic head is going to be equal to my dynamic discharge head minus my dynamic suction head and it's going to be equal to 47.375 minus 11.591, 35.78 meters. Okay, so we've gone through some examples, and we've done some calculations to find our total dynamic head. And we saw earlier that that was important because that usually defined a pump's performance. So when we saw a performance chart, we would use total dynamic head in order to determine flow rates out of pumps. If you go to the internet, um, there's lots and lots of different definitions of what total dynamic head is. And you may want to consult with a pump manufacturer if you're actually specifying a pump or need to find a pump for an application. There would be application engineers or specialists that could help you select the right pump for your system. Okay, in number five uh, of our series, we're going to continue on and talk about cavitation in pumps and some of the terminology that goes along with uh, pump selection and specifications relating to cavitation.